All right, I'm going to be demonstrating a uh, new technology. It's called the mag lock. Now, for the casting purposes, I'm going to use two fabrication dummies. Now, there's a variety of silicone rings, and that is all about what size is this liner, because there's different sizes of distal caps on these liners. The silicone ring goes on, and then our dummy that was originally made for fabrication, but it works beautifully for casting. So the silicone ring makes sure that my cast doesn't get stuck in there and I get my lock stuck in it. It also, this mag lock dummy also allows me to work on my alignment to make sure that I am pretty close to where I want to be. And if I'm not, I'll push the liner a little bit just to get me in the ballpark. Okay? There's also a little crate dummy on the side and that is so when you get the cast done you can cut around here, pull that out and everything slides out. I've added four little screws so that I know where my screws are going to be for when I mount this. Because what we're going to do in this demonstration is we're going to lock him with this lock. Okay, we're going to be taking this impression with C-Form. C-Form is a new material that we've developed. It's similar to fiberglass and yet it's not at all. It's made out of primarily polyester. It's a tri-blend of materials. But it's about the weave that makes it really different and makes it conform. It's also about the resin. We've made this resin similar to plaster in the sense that it is tougher to get the plaster or the resin out of the roll. So when you dunk it, it takes like plaster. You've got to work the water to the center. It's a water-activated urethane resin. It needs ample water because there's more resin than your standard fiberglass roll. Now, if you're taking a cast on most liners, they have a cloth interface. You need to put some sort of protection on there, protection being a saran wrap or something else so that you're not getting the resin into the actual cast or into your liner. Now, I'm beefing up this because we're going to walk this cast. There we go. Now, now he's a good sized guy, so we're going to add two rolls to this. Most people I can take cast in one roll. Now you can probably see lots of water dripping out of this. I like to roll this stuff on really wet. If it's really wet, then it's not sticky. And it's easier to conform and to work in. It also helps me get the resin activated. Remember, it's a water activated urethane resin, so we need ample water to activate the resin. So, I'm just trying to follow a little bit of my trim lines. I notice that I, how much I can make this do an S turn with this material. I also want this to be very strong, so I'm going to pull it extra tight down here in the bottom. Just bring it in. Okay. We try to get all those little screws to show up. My dummy on the inside. Now, C Forum puts out an exothermal reaction, which means it gets hot or warm. When you feel it getting warm, that's when it'll take shape. In the meantime, all you're doing is pushing resin around if you're trying to shape it when it's cold. If you want to take longer, use cold water. If you want to go faster, warm up the water. If you like it extra fast, put a, just a tad of hand soap in the water and it'll make it go a lot faster. Now by using the dummy in my cast, I've ensured that I have exactly the right dimension for the mag lock and the liner connection so that I do not have any issue on spacing. 
So on this cast, I'm going to load heavily on the medial tibial flare. I'm going to go on pre-tibials and load those. A little bit of loading around Gertie's tubercle. I don't want to be on it. Underneath the fibular head, get a little bit of shaft loading. Because I got an ML. So if I'm loading up the medial tibial flare, I need to load the lateral side as well. I'm not worrying about the AP. I'm going to find his patella. And I'm going to give myself some dimples so I know. But I do not load the patella tendon. Patella tendon is really strong and it fights me. So if I'm sticking like I am right now because it's going off, I get my glove wet and this makes it more slick so I'm not sticking to it. So I can move around, I can plaster, I can move around and get the cast that I want. So relax your leg. So inside of here, let's see if I can roll this out and show you. Is the dummy. Now I could fill this right now and say, okay, we're good to go. I could fill this up. And what I classically could do is leave the dummy in there when I fill it. Or I can leave, I can take the dummy out and also do it that way. If you're going to fill it and leave the dummy in, take the silicone out so that your model comes all the way out and has all that flare built into it for your laminating. Let me do a little trim line. I'm going to go extra high because he's a big guy. I don't have any AP support in the socket, so I want to keep it extra high because of that. This can be done with a box cutter. And it can be done with a pair of scissors. So I got a really high posterior trim right now. And that's okay. I'm not worried about sitting. What we're going to do is I'm going to set this up so we can put a mag lock in it and actually walk them in it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the little dummy on the side. So there's the dummy. So you pull the little foam dummy off the side, and it should be free to go. So now my little fabricating, this is for laminating, it's for casting, everything is free of the cast. And now inside the cast I have the impression for everything. My dimensions are exactly what I want. But when I fill the cast, I put the dummy back in, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Now I'm going to cut out the four holes, I'm going to mount a plate, and actually mount up the mag lock. So the next thing we'll see, this is going to have the mag lock in it. Alright, so this is the mag lock. Notice it has a little wire out here and this has a push button. Now this button has little serrated edges and you can cut it according to the height that you want or how far you want to stick it out for your cosmetics or whatever. It has a finger screw that holds it in and it pulls straight out. There's two uh, electrode type things that are in here and so it has to plug in. One's bigger than the other so you have to be careful about which way you line that and then finger tighten this. Do not put a pair of pliers on it. It doesn't need that much. needs to hold the button down. So this slides through. We want to get the wire to come through the hole. I put this thing on the leg first. This is not for an active K3 patient. This was designed for the K2 patient who can't find a pin. A pin is mechanical locking mechanism. It's more secure. This was designed for the person that has a difficulty and can't handle a pin. But the first thing you do, and I'm going to bring this over the camera, is you listen for the sound of power being activated. Okay? So, the next thing you hear is another beep. Now that beep tells me that the magnetic field is at full strength. When I hit the button, you're going to hear another beep. That has a little different tone. That means we've canceled the rare earth magnet field and now we have the electromagnetic field controlling it. Alright. Now the mag liner you can see is different. It has a built-in 50 millimeter target. And that was the idea. We went from a little tiny 8 millimeter target 
to a 50 millimeter target to make it easier for the patient to find center. And in fact, they can be 10 degrees off and still have enough metal contact to have full suspension. Now, Knit Riot has made up a sock with a special hole for these liners. And what I want you to do is to stand in it until you hear the click. Metal to metal. Here we go. Do you hear that sound? Okay, now lift up. Okay, we have suspension. Okay, 44 pounds it's going to take to get that off of them. So it's plenty to do your average walking. And the whole point here is two things. Showing you the mag lock and showing you C form and its casting ability. First things first, I need to know how are you in comfort wise? A little bit high on the knee besides that, it's fine. How's the distal end on the tibia? It's actually comfortable. Okay. Are you comfortable enough to take a step? Yes. Okay, now what I want you to do when you take a step, because I want to make sure everything's strong enough also, I want you to take a step with your good foot forward and then back to test it. And back. Any discomfort with that? No. Okay, I can see our alignment needs a lot of work, but I want you to hold on to the bars, okay? Because this is just cast and we're just trying to learn about the socket as a test socket. Okay, go ahead and take a couple steps. Yeah, we need to outset this thing a mile. But, how are we doing? How are we feeling? It's fine. Feel good? Yeah. Okay. So even with an incredibly inset foot, remember we didn't batch a line, we didn't do anything we should have, we just slapped this together. We're okay. The mag lock is working fine with this. Um, there's always something to do, and this is a test socket. This is where you learn. This is where you test things, find out. But idea here is that in your cast, you're taking an extra step. You're getting one more thing out of it. So go ahead and sit down. Push the button. Slides right out. Very easy. 